guys, it's Danger Debs, the opposite of danger, and I'm at the Scottish Youth Hostel. And I've seen here for two days because I'm at the Royal Conservatoire doing a course called Induction to Stage Management. I just want to try it out. So I'm just packing. I've washed, I've woken up less than an hour ago, going to a bag with me all the way to the Royal Conservatoire and do my second day of class. I'm just trying it out. Could be a job for me. I don't know, it sounds really interesting. I like it. I like the class, I like the teacher. It's very interesting. 12 of us, 30 in different stage management. It's really good. Now, before I leave Scottish Youth Hostel, I've got to show you this place out because it's so cool. I've stayed here twice. I've really got to show you this place out because it has a game room. It really does have a game room. Ask yourself, what hotel has a game room? This place does. Can you think of any hotel that doesn't have a game room? Because this hotel does. So you're here. Through that door is a laundry room. And down here is a catering kitchen, which we'll go for in a minute. First, let me show you the game room. It's just for here. Oh, it's bright in here. Don't even put this a light on. This is the game room. Play pool, you can be on the stage singing. Oh, I just need you now. Lady Anne's gallon. Have to see them. Oh, you put some music on. This is new to me. Like, I was on, I would play pool, but I haven't found anybody. There's a lot of bands you can see also that are playing in Glasgow, and the one poster I saw in here that I have to like just like like because I want to see the band is Lady Antebellum. You look good. I really want to see them. There's also Amy McDonald, she's awesome. And there's Hey Violet. Hey Violet. There's are a lot of her posters. I remember the first time I was in here and I was playing pool with an Australian dude who was in a gap here travel like around Europe and a little bit of America. And we played pool. I can't remember if I bet him or not, but it was a good time seeing him and playing pool. It's a good time to play pool. If you don't want to play pool, try it out. It's a really fun, fun game. I mean, I have pool tables 10 minutes away from my house at Rollable, and I'm that good. I mean, give me a game of pool, I'll take you down. I've taken my boyfriend down. <laughs> I beat them at a lot of games. <laughs> I bet my rollerball, I bet them a make off, I never give them a rollerball. I'm that good. I'm that good at games. Let's get out of the game room. And I'll show you this TV studio room. Just through the secret door. And through this door. And it looks really nice. Seriously, the Scottish Youth Hostel will take anybody while you're a child or an adult. It's a nice room. I never really like stayed in this room. I just go past it because it's like posh. I'm not a posh person, so I don't think like I just serve to stay in this room. Anyway, you've seen the TV studio, you've seen the game room. Let me take you to the self catering kitchen where I need to go get something. Down here is the self catering kitchen. It's really, really big. really big. There's fridges, there's boxes, and there is um, free food. I'm gonna put my Diet Coke in there because I don't need that and I'm not carrying it. Down here is hobs and ovens. Gas. I hate gas. Anyway, I've got everything, sorted everything. I'm gonna go back up. Ow. This place is like a maze. But once you get used to staying here and you know your way around, you'll get used to the maze. At this hostel, you'll meet a lot of new people. I've met someone who was born in France but can speak German, French of course, and English. It was very, very good. And he had a son, a daughter. It doesn't matter what age you come to this hostel, you'll have a nice time. 
you can use the self-catering kitchen all by yourself or you can get breakfast made for you if you wake up very very early and right now the time is 9.30 my class starts in an hour so I'm gonna get my stuff head out walk to the Royal Tortoise which actually is not far I was very surprised like oh, I found it just by following the tracker on my phone I'm very pleased about myself let's go I'm packed if you have watched my vlogs you may remember that I lost my suitcase well I found it guys it's in my big suitcase anyway you found it we know where it is hopefully we can get these two back to Inverness at the Royal Conservatoire, small building. I'm at the Royal Conservatoire. I'm going to show you one of the rooms that are so cool and basically the only room I can show you. It's really cool. It's got kitchen, tables, and this wall you can draw on. I've drawn it. Help us to draw the wall. I have. I'm there and I've drawn Peter Pan as that's a ship. And I've drawn a little person says hi. And I've drawn the rain. The rainbow? The sun. I've drawn the sun. And I must say, you can draw too. It's really big. If you like this idea, maybe you should do it too. It's really cool. Next time I come here, maybe I'll see the whole thing coloured in. Is stage management because a lot of students didn't know anything about stage management. So on here we've talked about the qualities that stage management need to have and that's what this page shows. It's about the sort of things that stage managers do and the qualities stage management need to have. And from that I then came up with the two key words that I use for stage management which is organisation and communication. And they're the two key things that stage managers are about and that they need to have the skills in. Then I did a little sort of stick, stick men and women thing uh, to meet the team and I went through what each of the individual members of the team were, a sort of a bullet pointed list of what they do for, in each of their roles and a key word that they have as well which um, as you can see for uh, assistant stage manager it's assists and DSM is deputised and stage manager I have the word overseer and that just sums up what each of the jobs is that they do. Okay. Then we moved on to talk about stage management. We did a practical exercise before we did this and we came back and we talked about who stage management talked to on their daily life. So we did a communication wheel of all the different departments and all the different people that stage management would need to talk to. It's a good one. The spider of communication, I call that. Um, uh, then, in the afternoon, we talked about propping and we talked about what propping was and what it involved and then the students got sent out on a two hour mission to do, to do some research for me which was then part and parcel of this, this particular page and then we discussed the findings afterwards so they had to go out and they had to find something they liked and they had to go and then research it online and find out the information. We researched this building. So the next, the next um, section is actually the next day and this today the second day we broke down things into more detail so although we talked about propping yesterday now we talked about how to lay out a prop stable and how to notate it correctly and that's what this page is all about so they learned the students learned how to know how to actually mark up a prop stable and what to put in it and the information that they needed to contain on it that was fun seeing so many props and doing the table <laughs> And then what I also said was for stage management it's really crucial that we have a lot of detail in our paperwork. So I used an example of a tray set with um, tea stuff. So we had a sugar bowl and we had a teapot and we had a jug. And I also talked about the fact that if the, the, the tray was set on a props table, when it got picked up it was a mirror image because it got turned around and taken on stage. So the handles need to face one way around but when they went on stage they were the right way around for the person holding them. And I discussed that could be because somebody was left handed and they needed them. So, so that attention to detail is crucial. Also that the teapot was full of tea and the handle was to stage right. That we had three teaspoons and we had a milk jug. And we, this was a separate picture that was as well as the props table notation that was giving you more detail. So we discussed how you would do that sort of thing. Then we talked about running lists um, and the crucial element of what a running list was and why we needed them and the sort of information that you need to put on a running list. 
And the last one, the and biggest then, one. Then we moved on to we moved on to talking about. So that was about the stage manager and the ASMs, and then we moved back into the rehearsal room to talk about what the DSM would do, and we talked about the prompt copy and how to lay out and create a prompt copy with three columns and what each of those columns meant and how you went about blocking. And so we talked about that and we talked about putting cues into the book and after that, so that page is that, and then I went on to show you how to actually notate blocking, the different ways of notating blocking, whether you write it down, whether you use arrows and symbols or little diagrams like that or bigger diagrams where you've got sort of flow diagrams with arrows showing you where to go. Blocking is movement on stage. So that's another example. And then we talked about queuing, and we talked about putting all the cues into the prompt copy and whereabouts in the prompt book they go as well. Then after that, so that's the last page there, then we did, um, we sat around a table and we showed examples of all these sorts of things, plus more examples, and then we moved on to markouts, which we don't have a page for there because it was just examples from my, my folder, and we showed all those examples, and then we did a little exercise on markouts, then we had a question and answer session at the end, and that was the end of our two-day short courses. I've had a really good time doing the two-day courses, really interesting, I think I really want to do it, but I must say, multitasking a lot, I must say. And you've worked with um, Scottish Ballet and Opera, haven't you? Before I came to the Conservatoire, I was actually the head of the stage management team at Scottish Ballet. But before that, I did 12 years of theatre in various theatres around the country. So I worked in places like Colchester, Leicester Haymarket, York Theatre Royal, the Lyceum in Edinburgh, um, Dundee Rep, various theatres across the country, doing uh, small-scale touring as well, and as well as the larger-scale stuff. And I've also worked internationally as well. So a big varied career, 25 years before coming here of uh, a variety of different things at a variety of different levels. If you like what Suzanne does, maybe you should do her course at the Royal Conservatoire called? It's actually the Production Technology and Management degree course and it's a three year degree. I love to do it, but I don't do three year courses. I've got radios to do, <laughs> but it sounds really interesting. So many multitasking jobs to do. I know that was a long talk, but I think it's very important for you guys to hear that if you love the creative industries and want a little bit of notice of what it's like to be in the creative industries and be in a stage management. Anyway, now I'm going to head to Paisley with this big suitcase and bag. Cool. Movie of Wonder. You got enough snake screwdrivers. Oh no, I forgot to miss the vlog. I can prove it to you because I'm eating breakfast. It's no longer the weekend, it's Monday. I'm so sorry, I forgot to finish the vlog. I was watching Rick and Morty and we were looking at the computer in Ryan's room. So if you did enjoy the vlog and you think you like induction to stage management because you want to be a stage management and work with the creative industries, please give this video a thumbs up, comment below and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. And hopefully I remember to finish the vlog on the actual day. Bye guys!